Police investigating the death of a pensioner in County Down have launched a murder inquiry. 77-year-old Tilly Campbell was found dead by fire officers as they attended her house at Barna Park in Donaghadee early this morning. A 36-year-old man was arrested. Police now had 96 hours to hold and question Robert Harvey. Forensic teams were immediately dispatched to try to gather evidence linking the suspect to the crime. In the main double bedroom where Ms Campbell would have slept, there was an extensive uh, distribution of blood staining on the walls. The blood was projected blood and it had been sprayed up gave the impression of an origin point which would be about the head of the bed. Most of the blood was sprayed onto the wall, uh, what one would expect uh, from uh, blows being delivered uh, to someone's head. Uh, there was also a smeared mark on the wall just beside the light switch at the door. Uh, that would appear to have come from someone's hand. Perhaps they were searching for the light switch uh, and they've smeared the blood down the wall. A single spare room was beside the main master bedroom. Uh, there was evidence of blood staining on the bed. There was also extremely heavy blood staining on the floor just beside the head of the bed. There was some splashing of blood on the adjacent uh, furniture on the wardrobe. My impression is that uh, she had been deposited on the bed and she had slipped off the bed onto the floor beside it. And as she impacted the floor, the blood would have been sprayed at that time. Blood spatter evidence would prove crucial, but even more damning was the comprehensive glass fragment evidence, which tied the suspect irrefutably to the scene of the crime. The door from the porch to the outside backyard, the glass had been broken and that was most probably the point of access actually to the house itself. A pair of trainers had been recovered from the scene. They were packaged and submitted to us for examination, including an examination for the presence of any glass particles that may have been present. On looking through the microscope, we were able to visualize the presence of glass and each fragment is removed on the tip of a scalpel. At the conclusion of our examination, we were able to demonstrate that one of the trainers found at the rear of the suspect property had left a footwear mark just at the entrance point to the main dwelling at the broken double glazed unit. We were able to demonstrate that one of those trainers also bore glass, not only from that broken glass unit, but for both broken panes at the back door to find glass from all three broken windows, not only on the trainers in question, but also on the clothing within the washing machine. In my opinion, this would indicate that the wearer of these items of clothing and footwear would have been the perpetrator of the incident in question. This forensic information was relayed to the investigating officer who confronted Robert Harvey in the interview room. There was glass found in those training shoes. That is a match for the glass out of the double glazing that was broken. So that puts those training shoes in that lean to at the time the glass was smashed. Could be glass from anything. No, it's been matched. He hasn't to me, it's been forensically matched. The glass from the window, the glass in this training shoe. Robert, tell us what happened. Happen Sorry? Nothing happened. Tell me what happened, Robert. Nothing happened. Tell me why you killed her. I killed nobody. You killed Tilly Campbell in cold blood. Further forensic discoveries tightened the net even more around the suspect. The weapons recovered um, at the time of Harvey's arrest um, from the bedroom, scissors, 
a hammer and a hatchet. We were able to locate Robert Harvey's DNA and we were also uh, able to locate a mixed profile that believed to be that of both Robert Harvey and Matilda Campbell. The scissors would be conducive with some of the injuries found on Tilly's body uh, during uh, the post-mortem examination. The boxer shorts removed from Harvey were submitted for examination. They were found to have blood that matched that of Tilly Campbell on the waistband and also to the rear of the boxer shorts, both inside and outside of the boxer shorts. During the interview process, Robert Harvey attempted to explain his movements during the course of the evening. He would allege that he lay down for the evening and he did not awaken until the fire service um, rapped at his window sometime about five to six in the morning. Now what we find during the 96 hour period, this to be incorrect, that Robert Harvey at uh, 25 past three in the morning had actually topped up his mobile phone. This was put to him during interview and he alleged that maybe that was accident, maybe he had rolled over on his phone during the course of the night. These phone records are telling us that, that your phone was topped up at 326 and you quite freely admit you had the phone and there was nobody with you. Your phone dialed that number. Okay. If it lands on it, if it was on the bed or something. You mean to tell me that you may have rolled over, your phone's dialed 4444, and some part of your body has been able to get the exact code of a top up card for I'm you to sure top it up? If it was the top number dialed then, it was topped up on it? Or was it just 444 it was pressed? No, no, your phone was topped up. Robert, why are you lying to us? Despite the mounting forensic evidence against him, Harvey continued to deny any involvement in the murder of Tilly Campbell. However, when confronted with the last piece of evidence, a bloody sock, his demeanour visibly changed. During the immediate follow-up and the search of the locality, police officers found a sock in a bin um, that belonged to number 39 Barna Park. This bin um, was a recycling bin. And the people that owned the property um, would categorically state that would, nothing would be found in that bin other than recycling materials. Um, this sock bore um, the blood of Tully Campbell. The bin uh, was seized as a, an item and taken away for further examination. Do you have a pair of socks like that? I don't know. You see it's covered in blood? I'll say it's covered in red stuff, yeah. Is, is that your shot? I don't know. You don't know? No. Whose blood's that? I don't know. Is that Tilly's blood? I don't know. Maybe, I don't know what it is. It's red. Could be anything, could be paint. During the interview process, uh, Robert Harvey um, had remained calm. Um, he had responded to questions uh, up to the 8th interview um, out of 16. He did show concern when we put to him that we had recovered um, a bloodied sock um, in the bin uh, belonging to number 39. From the ninth interview onwards, uh, Robert Harvey either chose not to speak or um, was selective in his responses. We have got your trainer and we have got a food mark of that trainer in the lean-to. We've got glass from the double glazed window pane. We've got a knife that matches knives from your kitchen. Do you see where we're going here? I know where you're going, I. I believe that you killed Tilly in cold blood. I didn't kill Tilly. Uh, when this uh, evidence that we had in our possession at that time um, was put to Robert Harvey uh, in the final interviews, although he did not respond, he physically slumped uh, to the weight of the evidence put before him. On the 13th of October 2006, at five past midnight, I charged Robert Har Harvey with the murder of Tilly Campbell. Robert Harvey was remanded in custody by Downpatrick Magistrates Court on the 13th of October 2006. A protracted trial took place in which Harvey replaced his legal team before finally pleading guilty. He was convicted of the murder of Matilda Campbell on the 22nd of September 2009. It was when the court was going on and at the end of it, when Justice Hart, it was reading out details. It was atrocious of, I didn't even know half of, you know, that. 
beforehand until the end. It was horrible. It was your worst nightmare hearing what he'd actually done to Mum. The man has been sentenced to at least 23 years in jail for killing his elderly neighbour in Donacadee in County Down. Robert George Harvey admitted murdering Tilly Campbell, who was 77 and lived in Barna Park. The court was told that three years ago, Harvey was drunk when he broke into the woman's house and battered her with an axe. The judge said it was an exceptionally violent and prolonged assault and that Harvey had shown his victim absolutely no mercy. I suppose it was the best outcome you could have got, you know, because the most was 25 years and he got 23. But... It's, for us, it's, no, it's not long enough. You know, that's times I thought if the death penalty was there, but then again, for somebody like that, that would have been too quick. During his trial, it emerged that Robert Harvey had 32 convictions for burglary. He also had convictions for criminal damage and threats to kill. Police footage taken at his home reveals some of the paraphernalia and spoils of his criminal activity. Robert Harvey never gave a convincing account of the events of the 9th of October, the night till Lee Campbell died. However, police investigations did establish his movements. It emerged that on the night of the murder, Harvey had been drinking heavily with friends and had stated he would kill for money. He had continued drinking after leaving their company and plowed the last of his money into a poker machine. Broke and frustrated, he returned to Barna Park in the early hours. He then broke into the property of his vulnerable and elderly neighbour, believing her to have cash in the house saved up for a new mobility scooter. When Tilly Campbell interrupted the burglary, Robert Harvey attacked her in a frenzy. He dragged her into the spare room, where she was later found huddled on the floor. After the murder, Harvey set fire to the house in an attempt to cover his crime. This was a brutal and vicious attack upon a defenceless 77-year-old uh, lady in her own home, the place where she should feel safe and where she'd feel comfortable. She was attacked by a neighbour, um, someone known to her. Um, this lady should have been able to live out her days in her home uh, peacefully. After the death of her husband, Tilly Campbell had sought the comfort and security of Barna Park and its community. She had no idea that her life would be taken by someone so close to home. Tilly was a trusting, popular member of the community who believed in giving, not taking. She was like a mother to me. She took me under her wing. She would have done extra things for me. She loved her home, she loved her garden. That was my memories of Tilly. Tilly loved to shop. We would have went to car boot sales. We would have went around things like that. She loved anything to do with bargains or pruck. She loved it. And when she was going shopping, I would have went up Everyday clothes, coat over the top, but Tilly would have come out. The shoes would have matched, the scarf, the handbag, everything matched. She always was glamorous. Everybody knew Tilly. Her grandkids have lost, lost their grandmother and their kids have lost their great-grandmother. They'll never remember because they were too young to remember my mum. So they have missed out on her love. I like Tilly to be remembered the way that she was, happy. She was very, very glamorous. She was full of life. 
and she just loved, loved company and she loved going out and meeting people and she loved a bit of crack. She really was full of life. <laughs>